Okay, in this video, I'm going to go through a second Kuntucker uh, example where we're going to have the following utility function here u equals 2x times y cubed. And this is our utility function. And we are looking to maximize it, maximize our utility. And we're going to have the following constraints which are the same as the last example, x plus y is less than or equal to 50. This is going to be our budget constraints. We can spend no more than $50. <clears throat> and um, x, 2x plus y is less than or equal to 60. This is our coupon constraint yet again, the same as before, where we can spend no more than 60 coupons. And product x costs us two coupons per time. Okay, so using what's called the Kuntucker, and we use that when we have more than one constraint, and we have um, these what are called inequalities, um, then we have to use, again, the Kuntucker method. So uh, step one, assume lambda 2 equals 0, or that the coupon constraint is non-binding. What that means in English terms is that we don't run out of coupons. Uh, what that gives us for a Lagrange function is x plus y cubed um, plus lambda 1 times 50 minus x minus y. So we ignore constraint number 2 altogether, take our derivatives. So derivative with respect to x will just be 1, it's attached to the y cube, so that comes along for the ride, plus lambda 1 times 0, minus 1, minus 0, gives y cubed minus lambda 1 equals 0. Uh, second ly here becomes uh, 3xy squared plus lambda 1 times 0, minus 0, minus 1, which gives 3xy squared minus lambda 1 equals 0. The last one here gives us the 50 minus x minus y equals to 0. And now from the lx, we get that y cubed equals to lambda 1. From ly, we get that 3xy squared equals to lambda 1. So y cubed equals to 3xy squared. Um, so either y equals to 0 or um, we can cancel out uh, two of the powers of y, which leaves y to the power of one on the left equals to three x. And from there, substitute the three x in for the y in our L lambda constraint. And we get 50 minus x minus 3x equals to 0. 50 equals to 4x. Divides both sides by 4 and 12.5 equals to x. Okay, that means that y is 3 times that amount. Okay, so that gives us... 37.5. Now, before we assume that we have solved this problem, what we need to go check is what we assumed, which was the following. We assumed constraint number two was satisfied, which meant that we did not run out of coupons. And it cost us two coupons for item X and one for item Y. So we're buying 12.5 units of item X and 37 and a half of Y. Is that indeed less than or equal to 60, which is our number of coupons that we have? So this gives us 25 plus 37.5. Which gives us 
Is that less than or equal to our allowable 60? No, it is not. So constraint number two is not satisfied, so we need to move on to step number two. Where we let lambda one equal to zero, meaning that we assume constraint number one was satisfied. Remember constraint number one was our budget constraint. So we rewrite our L. Um, so again, it's um, the U, which is x, y cubed, plus lambda 1 times constraint 1, plus lambda 2 times constraint 2, um, where we're now working with constraint 2, which is the 2x plus y less than or equal to 60, which becomes 60 minus 2x minus y. So our new Lagrange function is L equals to x times y cubed plus lambda 2, 60 minus 2x minus 2y. We go take all of our derivatives and see what we get. We get y cubed minus 2 lambda 2 for the first one. Um, 3xy squared minus lambda 2 for the second one, and 60 minus 2x minus y for the third one. Set everything equal to 0. y cubed over 2 is lambda 2 for the first one. Um, 3xy squared is lambda 2 for the second one, and that gives y cubed over 2 equals to 3xy squared, since they're both equal to lambda 2. Um, cancel out a power of y, so either y equals to 0 or um, the following is true, y equals to 2 times 3x, which gives 6x. Um, and then we substitute the 6x in for y right here. Okay, back in our um, constraint function. Little note here, there is this possibility that y equals to 0. It was also a possibility all the way back here. Um, okay, either y could equal to 0 since both sides of the equation contained a y, so that would give you 0 equals to 0, or y in this case was 3x in the first uh, step. Moving on to what we're just working on right now, step number 2, either again y is 0 or y is 6x. Again, y is 0 is a possibility because we have y's on both sides, so 0 could be equal to 0 regardless of what else it's being multiplied by. I'm going to ignore the y equals to 0 cases. You can check them if you'd like. You can ignore them because of the following. Our utility function is x times y cubed. So when y equals to 0, our utility just drops down to 0. So this is actually our minimum solution instead of maximum. When y is 0, we get a minimum utility. Uh, what we're looking to do is maximize the utilities. So we're going to ignore that solution. Some of you, if you were to solving this problem on your own, wouldn't even realize that y equals to 0 is a possible solution. Um, okay, moving back on to solving our step number 2 problem, we are going to plug in the 6x for the y right here. And... Um, solve for x, we get 60 equals to 8x now, divide both sides by 8, and um, x is going to be 60 over 8, whatever that turns out to be here, let's see, 7.5 is equal to x. Um, so that gives us y is equal to 6 times x, so 6 times 7.5. which gives 45. So now what we need to go do, we originally in step number two assumed that constraint 
number one was satisfied, meaning we would not run out of money. We worried about running out of coupons, we didn't worry about running out of money. Now let's go double check that. So we need to double check that we do indeed spend less than or equal to $50. So 7.5 plus 45 uh, is less than or equal to 50. Is this true or not? Well, it turns out that X plus Y ends up adding up to 52 and a half and not, so it's not less than or equal to 50. What this means is that we now have to move on to what's called step number three here, where we assume both constraints are satisfied. gives us is that x plus y is all the way at the limit at 50 and 2x plus y is all the way at the limit at 60. Um, they are both binding if you will. We use up all of our money and all of our coupons. Okay, so we actually don't even need to do a Lagrange problem here because uh, we have two equations and two unknowns. We can just use substitution. And go solve for x and y. So in the first equation, I get uh, x is equal to uh, 50 minus y. And then I go substitute in that expression for x into the second equation and I get 2 times 50 minus y plus y gives me 60 so that's 100 minus 2y plus y equals to 60 um, this gives 100 minus 60 equals to 2y minus y 40 equals to y okay and if 40 equals to y, that gives that x equals to 50 minus 40, x must equal to 10. So the solution is that we should buy 10 units of item x, and we should buy 40 units of item y for maximum utility. Let's say this was butter and bread, that might make sense. Um, okay, buy four times the amount of bread than butter. And um, that would give us a utility at 10 for x, 40 for y, and y gets cubed. Uh, and so that gives us a utility of, let's see here, 640,000. And that is our optimal solution.